New Hope TV, your encounter with God. Hallelujah. The last episode we heard about how in the book of Thessalonians, just read that word once again to a connect to just have the bridge. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 said, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. So it's only God who can separate you. Man's decision to separate, you'll never be able to separate. That's why we had taken so many decisions earlier that when you, especially when you go for a retreat, that I'll give up this, I'll give up that, I will do this, I won't do this. But you have, as soon as you came back, in no, in, in, in a few days' time, you went back to your old self. So God has to separate you completely. Sanctify means separate. Hallelujah. And the separation should take place in three areas of your life. Your spirit, soul and body. And the separation to, should continue until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ when he will come once again in the clouds. As we read from the book of Thessalonians that he will come once again in the clouds in great majesty by the shout of an archangel, by the trumpet of an archangel. Yes, he's going to come once again to take you and uh, me and all who are in Christ, either dead in Christ or living in Christ, he will come to you. So until that day, Hallelujah. You have to be separated from the Lord. And again, this is connected to another word in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. It says uh, that uh, the Holy Spirit is given to you and me as a guarantee of our inheritance. Inheritance of the kingdom of God until the redemption of the purchased possession. Until the day that the Lord comes and takes us with him. Hallelujah. So it is a whole person. You cannot have, like I told you earlier, you cannot have partial salvation. Partial lordship. No. Sorry, so first, you cannot have partial lordship. And therefore, if you are intending or if you are planning to have partial lordship of Jesus, partial lordship of the world, then you don't get any salvation. There is no partial salvation. The other one fails. Are you with me? It fails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, first you have to ensure total lordship. Then you will get as a blessing of that, as a consequence of that, total salvation. But if you have got partial lordship only, you are under the lordship of Jesus and under the lordship of the world, then the second part of it never materializes. In your intellect, in your thought, in your deceptive understanding, you may think I am saved. But that is a deception that comes from your own, um, you know, your own thinking. That's not the mind of God. The mind of God says unless you fulfill the requirement of the first one, you cannot be eligible for the second one. So unless you are under the lordship of Jesus completely, fully, 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 completely, then... Only then you can be saved fully. And God saves you. He does not save you partially. He saves you fully. That is why, my dear brothers, please understand this, you know. Some people really, I don't know, religion sort of distorts your understanding. Distorts your understanding of the truth, of the word. That is why the book of Hosea says, my people are being destroyed for lack of understanding. Lack of understanding of what? Lack of understanding of God's mind. Lack of understanding of the word that God has given us. Hallelujah. Religion perverts it. Actually, it is, not, it is a world is today a crooked and a perverse generation because they are living under the instruction of religion which is crooked and perverse. They are looking at the interest. Religion is never ever from God. Religion is man-made. Religion, if you just look at it around us, every religion, it's only an attempt of man to reach out to God. That failed and therefore God reached out to man. Hallelujah. So you need to understand, this, this surrender to the Lordship of Jesus has to be total and complete. How only then you can really exercise and it must be complete in your spirit, in your soul and in your body. Only then, hallelujah, you can expect to be saved when God saves you, he also saves you in your every area of your life. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Because uh, the devil, the word of God says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, that the devil comes to kill, to, to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come to give you life. Life in all its abundance. This life is the abundant life is in all the areas where you have separated in terms of 1 Thessalonians 5.23. That is, sanctify you completely and may you be whole in your spirit, in your body and in your soul. So there is a completeness of the blessings that the Lord gives. The abundant life is in your, in your spirit, in your soul and in your body. But when you, when you, you know, in a person, if you look at a person, there are two aspects of a person. There is a seen and the unseen. Are you with me? Like even me. There are a lot of things people see in me. There are a lot of things unseen in me. Which only I know. Of course God knows. So there is the heard and the unheard. Part of a man. There is the seen and the unseen. 
part of the behavior of a man. There is a public life and a private life of a man. There is the outer life and the inner life of a man. There is a physical life and the spiritual life of a man. So there are two things which are totally different. Sometimes people in the outward, you know, what is heard, what is seen, what is public, what is outdoor, what is physical, they are exemplary. They have separated them totally in their intellect. Huh? I am not talking of in the sense of God. Because in the sense of God's assessment, unless there is total, it is in nothing. It is like a zero. If you have not given totally, then it is zero. And any fact, any numerical numer, number multiplied by zero, the result is zero. So as far as if your lordship is not 100%, then it is zero. And all that you do will be of no avail because you are multiplying it with a zero with results in a zero salvation. Hallelujah. Again, so like a man, in the spiritual the thing, sense, there is an unheard thing, the unseen thing, there is a private thing, there is an inner and there is a spiritual. So unless both are in alignment and according to God's word and separated to God, for God, then you fail. You fail to qualify for the total uh, Lordship of Jesus Christ. In which case you will never ever be able to say with confidence that I am saved. That there is therefore now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ, you are never in Christ. Hallelujah. Who walketh not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. No, you are walking your partly in the flesh, partly in the spirit. So you need to understand that is a corrupted belief, a corrupted Lordship. God does not want such people. It is like saying, you know, it's like a corrupted marital life where you commit adultery only once a week. Are you with me? But all the six days of the week, you are a very, very, very faithful person. Still, it is adultery. So, still, it's not acceptable. Are you with me? So, the word of God very clearly says it has to be a total surrender. So, there is an inner sanctuary in us, each one of us. There is an inner sanctuary. It is that sanctuary that the Lord wants you to enthrone himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a heart. That is a repository of emotions. That is why we heard earlier that the heart, uh, you should conserve, you should protect your heart. Hallelujah. With all discernment for out of which arises all the issues of life. So it is an inner sanctuary that the, you have to give the Lord. I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, if your soul is surrendered to the Lord, then definitely your soul is in tandem with your spirit, which is always in alignment with God. And whatever you do, whatever you think, whatever you say, will be according to the will of God. So it is an inner sanctuary <coughs> that the Lord Jesus wants lordship, where you will enthrone him. Hallelujah. It is, like I told you earlier, the spirit is always in alignment with God. So your spirit must be in tandem to that of God. You should not be a spirit because you must be led by the spirit of God. Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. So the spirit, you must be surrendered to the Holy Spirit of the living God. In the spirit realm. Next is the soul. The soul is a repository of all your emotions. The decision making process is in your soul. It is the, the one part, one third or one part out of the three of your as a being, the soul. That must your so Jesus must have dominion, lordship over your soul. And when these two are there, like I told you earlier, the soul is the opposite, the mind, the emotions, the will, the feelings, everything is in the soul. <coughs> so if you surrender these two things, only then you can say that you are totally surrendered to the Lord. But you need to understand the mind, the soul is a battlefield. Hallelujah. The spirit is definitely not the battlefield. The body is certainly not the battlefield. Because the word of God very clearly says in the book of Ephesians that our battle, our fight, is not with uh, flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Let's read what the word says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So we need to understand this battle that we are fighting is not 
against man, against flesh, against blood, but it's against the spiritual battle. So we need to understand that this battle is in the mind. It is in the mind. So it is a mind that should be in tandem with God. That is why God's word very clearly says in the book of Romans, do not be conformed with the world, but by a renewal of your mind, be transformed into a new creation. So whether you are a new creation or an old creation, physically there is nothing that happens or nothing that is <coughs> visible to you outwardly. But what the change has taken place is in the internal man, the inner man. That is why it says in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, whosoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The new creation, the change has taken place in your mind. The old has gone and the new has come. The old thought pattern, benchmarks, assessment, everything is gone. And a new benchmark, a new pattern of life has come into existence. So this is the renewal of the mind which is talked of in the word, in the book of Romans chapter 12. We'll just, just read it. The book of Romans chapter 12 very clearly says that this has to take place in your heart. That is why it says, uh, Romans 12 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world the worldly system, the worldly pattern, the worldly benchmarks. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there has to be a change that takes place. In your, so that, uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when your mind has changed, when your, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> when your, the decision process in your mind has changed, then uh, you will be, executing the perfect will of God in your life. But this change means there is a conflict. So long, so long as you were earlier under the sway of the devil and now you want to come under the lordship of Jesus, there is a resistance. And this is the battlefield. This is a, people many, many of, very often think the battle is with the people of other denominations, like you see in many places, other denominations within the Christian faith or with other religions. No. God never came to set up a religion, hallelujah, but he came to restore a relationship with the Father, which is marred by sin. Hallelujah. So it is a mind which is a battlefield. That is the battle, that is the battle, that is the fight that Paul says that I have fought. I have fought an unceasing because God's word says in the beginning of, hallelujah, in the beginning of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, finally, finally means at the end, be strengthened. Hallelujah. That is the final battle that everyone has to face. Because you will accept, you will hear the word of God, you will decide, take a decision. But the decision cannot be implemented by the body or by the person unless it is implemented first as a rule of law in your spirit, in your, in your soul. That is why it says, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. His might. So you need to depend upon the power of God. The power of God. That is why you need to understand in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 God says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. A fear of the people around you. A people of what could happen to you if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Master. If you transfer your Lordship from that of the devil to Jesus. If you opt to live according to him. If you opt to separate for him. Yes, separate completely for him. Not only your mind, your soul, spirit, soul and body complete until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That just means until you die, until you are taken up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is a big battle that goes on. Hallelujah. So you need that strength of the Lord. And that is why 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, a revelation knowledge of the love of God, a spirit of power, a power that comes from the presence of God and a sound mind to make this make the correct choices. Hallelujah. So it's all in the mind, this battle. That is why 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says, I have fought a good fight. Hallelujah. So he says, in my battlefield in the mind, I have fought a good fight. Then he says, I have completed that race, that fight. And then again he says, I have not, halfway I have gone and turned back. No, I have completed it. Then it says, most importantly, and during that fight and the completion of that fight, I have kept my faith. 
I did not lose it. I did not compromise it. Many people compromise. We heard in the book of John chapter 6, where his disciples who walked with him, who saw the miracles that Jesus did, who heard Jesus say very clearly without any shadow of doubt, calling Yahweh Abba, my father, telling that I am the light of the world. I am the one who has come according to the scriptures. I am the Lord Jesus. I am the son of God. So they ex not only heard him, but experienced him. When you read the word in the book of... Uh, you should read that. What is the level of the experience that the disciples had? My dear brother says that is not the exclusive territory of the disciples. That is as a covenant promise for each one of us who are believers. But I just want to tell you the, 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 the exposure or the intimacy they had with the Lord Jesus. He says, hallelujah, in the, in the epistle of John, 1 John chapter 1 verse 1 onwards that which was from the beginning that is the word of God that which we heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life is all about Jesus the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested to us to us in the person of his son Jesus, hallelujah, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you with, with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. So it was, this was the level of the intimacy that the disciples had. And it was some of those disciples who opted, saying that this is a difficult saying. Who can believe and understand this? And the word says, and they walked no more with Jesus. Today I want to tell you, Paul when he wrote in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7, and he says, I have fought a good fight. I have completed my race. And I have kept my faith. I never allowed my faith to be compromised. Because Jesus in the same uh, gospel, John 6, then he asked, when people left, he asked Peter, do you also want to leave? Just because there is what is called the herd mentality. Hallelujah. Herd mentality. That everybody does it, therefore that must be right. Today, many religions are following the herd mentality. We are a majority in terms of numbers, so this must be right. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, you are not an animal to have herd mentality. You are children of God. You are sons and daughters of God who love the Father. You don't, you don't care if, I mean, I'm just giving you an example only. If all the servants in your house have deserted, you don't desert your father. Because they had no relationship. They were looking from one employment, potential of one employment to another potential of another employment. Similarly, similar, just like many people in the believers, they're looking at the potential of migrating from one church to another church. Or maybe even from one religion to another religion. But that is why... The word of God says the servant does not abide forever. But sons abide forever in the father's house. Hallelujah. So if you're a son and a daughter of God, or touched by God, or given your life to Jesus, are living under the lordship of Jesus, you should be able to say also exactly what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. He says, I have fought. You must be able to say, my dear brother, in your own, as a testimony of your own life. Only then you can say, I was under the lordship of Jesus. Otherwise, you are a part-time part submission, part-time, no, lordship. It doesn't work. It does not work. Hallelujah. So, it says, word of God says, I have fought a good fight. I finished my race and I kept my faith. Hallelujah. Till the end. And therefore, there is a crown of righteousness, which the righteous just will give me. Then it tells about the hope for each one of us. And not only for me, but for everyone who anxiously waits for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That crown is again, that is referred to in the uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, that you must be separated in your spirit, soul and body until the day of Jesus Christ, uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, at that, till that day, you separate yourself. And then, there is a crown of righteousness, the righteous judge, who gave a crown of righteousness to Paul, would also give me and you a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you have to give Jesus full control over your life. I want to tell you, my dear brothers, when you give Jesus full control over your life, 
the onus of protecting you, providing for you, caring for you, looking after every need of yours is on your owner, on your Lord. That is why, my dear brother and sister, David who experienced the provision of God, hallelujah, hallelujah, I hope it's encouraging to you, hallelujah. For many, really, what shall I say, hardened, hard, what shall I say, very senior believers, this might all appear to be very simple, very ordinary, they're not getting anything, anything out of it. But I hope you will get something out of it, my dear brother, my dear sister. That is why, that is why the psalmist, David, who experienced the presence of God, the provision of God, the love of God, in spite of, uh, hallelujah, having committed adultery and committed murder, and, and all those things, as shed blood, hallelujah, which disqualified him from even building the temple of God, Hallelujah. He was able to say with confidence, the Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, today if you have a relationship with Jesus, uh, that he is your Lord, then he automatically owns you. Automatically becomes your shepherd. Automatically he has to take the onus of providing for every need of yours. Therefore, with confidence you will be able to say, I lack nothing. Hallelujah. Can you just say, repeat these words, the Lord Jesus is my shepherd and therefore I will lack nothing. If you have said that, I tell you something. God's word says in the book of Matthew chapter 9 that whatever you believe, let it happen to you according to your faith. So if you had said that, I can assure you on the strength of God's word, not my strength, I have no strength at all, on the strength of the covenant promise of God that if you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is your Lord, you will lack nothing in your life. Nothing in the spirit realm, nothing in the soul realm, nothing in your body realm. You will be complete. And as much as a shepherd is concerned about the safety of the sheep, a shepherd is concerned about the provision of feed, of water and grass for the sheep. Hallelujah. He will care for you. That is why the second word says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. And he leads me beside still waters. Well, psalm 23 is such a beautiful psalm. I would urge you to learn it by heart and say it every day. Because every day it is a confession of your faith. And whatever you confess there, I want to tell you, it will become a reality in your life. My dear brothers, be under the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, when you, when you like I told you earlier, uh, you know, God's word, when you surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus, it becomes the onus, the responsibility of the Lord to look after every need of yours. Many words which I speak are repeated, but I cannot invent for you new words. I cannot even discover for you new words. Hallelujah. I can only repeat what I have read God's word. But each time I want to tell you, you believe God's word. God's word is so dynamic. It's, so, it's, it's filled with dynamic power that you will be able to get greater revelation from that word. Maybe you are in need of, today there is some need or something that is troubling you. But I want to tell you, God will give you a revelation of how he can come to your rescue and he can take over your battle. Hallelujah. The, one of the greatest or best example is Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15. We know the situation. Jeshua the king was facing three armies which were coming against him to destroy him. In the physical realm, he knew very clearly that he cannot op uh, uh, fight against them. And if he did fight against them in the flesh, defeat is sure. But he also had a revelation knowledge that he is serving a God. The same God, hallelujah, hallelujah, which David, hallelujah, the shepherd boy, hallelujah, with which he killed the giant man Goliath. Not with spear, not with sword, but with a pebble. Today, and he said, you are coming against the, the hallelujah, hallelujah, the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord God of Israel. You, hallelujah. And it was only the presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that gave him victory. He knew the God that David served. He also knew that it is the same God that he is serving. Today I urge you, my dear brothers and sisters, it is the same God that you and I are serving. So, Jeshua the king saw this problem that he had. What did he do? He humbled himself. He proclaimed a fast. He prayed and he also made a confession to the Lord. Lord, we do not know what to do. Absolutely. But our eyes are toward you. We need you. You need to take over. And God, once he surrendered, actually it was a manifestation of the Lordship of Jesus over not only the people, over that situation. 
So I want to tell you, when you surrender your life under the Lordship of Jesus, He not only becomes your Lord over your whole thing, but He looks at each individual situation where He needs to come and exercise the Lordship. That is why again the book says, the scripture says, the eyes of the Lord are roaming all over the world to appear strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to Him. So it's not only He knows that He is Lord of all, He is Lord of you, your life, but he's also, his eyes are also focused on you every day, 24-7, to come to your aid, to appear strong and defeat every, everything that is coming against you. The well, only qualification that you need is that your heart should be loyal to him, that you should be 100% submitted to his lordship. Understand, my dear brothers and sisters, I hope if you take it in your heart, I will tell you, you will get such a deliverance. Hallelujah. From whatever problem you are facing today, you will get such a deliverance and a restoration. And you will get such confidence in the knowledge that the hope that you have in Jesus will never disappoint you. Because my God loves me. My God is with me. And he has said, do not fear. Because I am with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. So Jeshua the king had this knowledge. So he confessed. And what did God say? Hallelujah. It will be so, such a beautiful word in the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I have to read it for you. Because many, very often, there is nothing better than reading from God's word. Hallelujah. The book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15. When this particular situation was confessed and when they humbled themselves before the Lord and proclaimed a fast. Hallelujah. What does the word say? God through a prophet, he said, this is what he said, and he said, listen all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Amen. I want to continue this, this, particular, topic, uh, this particular verse in the next episode. So please uh, do not miss that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.